Good morning everybody. Hello and happy Monday to us all. If you're just wandering into your connection, making sure that your TVs and your iPhones and your devices and your laptop and your dogs are all in the right place, making the right connection, then um, I'm going to talk you through how the video will go today. We'll start with a standing position and in the standing position you're simply going to do a few squats to get that sense of rhythm and elasticity back into the breath in connection with your body. The standing squats can be done um, in such a position where you may want to be able to squat. I might take you to roll down, roll up, I'm not sure. The opening moment of this workout is not about the squats, although they should be done amazingly. Good morning, Margaret and Mena. The opening moment of this workout is to energize you rather than keep you a bit, Ugh, my weekend's just gone. Lindsay and Susan, hello there. Welcome to Monday morning. Um, possibly the last as live actual Facebook moment, unless things change. It's not that I won't be doing videos daily, it's that I won't necessarily do them live, because actually at nine o'clock we'll be hopefully getting the studio ready to have participants on the beautiful equipment that's all set out and ready for you. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Anne. Yes, hello, fellow Pilates, pirates. <laughs> um, your workout today is about obliques. The obliques, if we're a cylinder, which we are in terms of musculoskeletal structure, then the sides of you and obliques are very um, crisscrossy fibres. That sense of waking up everything in the middle, think of internal corsetry, which I clearly need right now, as do many of us who've been very active but doing lots of other things too. Good morning, Diane, and good morning, Thomas. You're ready to get your obliques firing up. Good morning, Ken too. Ken, you're in the room with Tom. Your standing position will be how we start, but quite quickly we'll be going to the floor. You will want to utilise your blue blocks or your head cushions for the section that is definitely lying on the back where we're going to really deeply um, increase our activation here. It goes without saying that anything I request of you in any movement, if it goes to the wrong place, i.e. within a joint, including the spinal joints, then that movement on you isn't accurate or isn't relevant. The other thing to think about with obliques, obliques will always be side bends version or rotation and you can guarantee that less is more. Usually when the body doesn't um, feel good, there's too much coming from the wrong place. And good morning to you, Carol. So let's get the show on the road. Um, you stand where you can get your feet parallel. Notice exactly where your pelvis is. Never assume it's the same place all the time because after a weekend of possibly Father's Day, and celebrating birthdays, all manner of things I'm sure. Um, the seat of positioning tends to twist and shift the alignment. We're ready to do some squats. As I said earlier, I'm just doing the squats shapes um, as a means of warming up and creating rhythm. I'm not asking you to be completely um, in your head about your alignment, or, although if you can manage that, that's great. Remember that the options for the arms, if indeed you'll find you're someone who naturally drops the upper chest, or you're set at a desk all day. I would certainly reach my arms back, either flowing them back as you go down, or even keeping them back if your ability to have dynamic posture um, actually isn't great. That would be Tom. So to keep the arms back while you're breathing in and out, for someone who's naturally desk bound and relatively stiff, if you're keeping your arms back, you're drawing your shoulder blades towards each other, there's a huge amount of energy going on through the arms, reaching backwards, as you go up and down through the squats. You're inhaling and exhaling, creating that deep core connection, keeping the collarbones wide open, keeping your abdominal area really working hard. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Lorna. And the next time you go down, stay. Place your hands onto your thigh bones. First spinal mobiliser is here. Breath out, chin to chest, rib cage bend. Imagine you've got a beach ball between your rib cage and your thigh bones. And then inhaling, allow the spine to stretch down to the floor, but keep your abdominal wall pulling away from your thighs. Keep your breath. A quick stretch of your hamstrings as you push your hands down. Press through your legs and get your legs to straighten and bend. Core connect as the legs stretch out and bend two more. Last time, keep the sense of length in the hamstring and glute. Place the hands on the thigh and then tilt your pelvis on the breath out to return your spine shape all the way back until you find yourself stood up. A quick stretch for the obliques. Let's take our legs wide open. 
and then find a squat. I'm not going to work here very much. It's more about opening you out in a standing shape. Pop your hands here. Pop your hand there. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Leslie. Here we go. Exhaling. Side bend. Your elbow comes in the direction of the hip. Breathe in. Turn and breathe out. Bring the hand to the hand. You've got your first oblique connect where the waist cinches into here. You breathe in again. Resist twisting the hips. Come back up and you're going to the other side. If you need to stand up in between, you can. Otherwise, to the other side. One arm up, big breath in. No twisting pelvis. Exhale, bend. Have a breath in. And then breathe out and rotate the shoulder. Head, neck and shoulders, you've got that rotation from the rib cage to the stern, um, chin. And then open back out, both hands here, and push through your legs. Bring your feet back together. You're going to go down to the mat. So sit yourself down. If you need to move your device to get a better view at this point, then do so. To get yourself lined up without anything twisting inappropriately. Your obliques don't want a pelvis that's twisted. The obliques want to um, work with a true position of the pelvic area here. If we get ourselves to lie down by, first of all, both feet absolutely level with one line on the mat, therefore knees level, and take yourself, we're going straight into lying down. You'll take yourself down, rolling through the spine. Once you're down there, slide, keeping both legs tight together, the heel is more under, not absolutely under, but more towards under the knee joint. If you need a block at this point, then find one. Wise, your first sequence here is a few breaths to notice and find the abdominal area. Recognize where the pelvis is, keep your feet heavy and your inner thighs. So you're inhaling nose and breathing out to heavy um, load behind the pelvis and behind your ribs. Inhale through the nose and exhale, experience your rib cage melt, lengthen and broaden behind you into the mat. Your arms are reaching. We then take it to ab curl. On the next breath out, your curl, pull the chin to the throat, keep your feet heavy and inhaling back down. Pelvic floor draws up. Spine. Ideally, you're not an imprint, but neither are you feeling anything in your lower back. So if going to a gentle imprint is your own way of doing this, then so do it. The moving part of the spine is your middle rib cage to the neck. The stable part of the spine is the sacrum to tailbone and the lumbar. Exhale, curl and stay. Be heavy through both feet and put your hands behind your head now. Exhale, curl and go over towards one thigh. Inhale, stay up and centre. Breathe out, over to the other side. Inhale and centre, heavy legs. The heavy legs, the heavy feet, heavy pelvis. And the only way you can start these rotational oblique works is making sure that the breath in allows the breath out to shrink you. The breath in expands the ribs, the breath out shrinks the ribs. It's so deliberately slow, the flexion up, Stay up, little flexion to one side, twist, stay up. You're keeping, therefore, rolling from one shoulder blade back to both and over to another. Your feet stay heavy, your pelvic floor connects, and you start to get more feelings between the hip bones as your rib cage and the navel to the spine area allow this rotation. Once more each side, Pull those thighs together and then the next inhale roll all the way down. Now put your arms out sideways, it doesn't matter if your palms face the ceiling, it's um, not relevant. It matters that your shoulder blades are level as you get your first hip roll with the inhale flowing over sideways. Use your breath out to feel the abdominals pull you back rather than just rocking and rolling. Inhaling, your feet stay absolutely connected in your thighs so it's as though your two legs Exhale, come back, have become one. Inhaling, over you go. The movement now, the obliques getting the lengthening and shortening as you roll through the pelvis. So it's the opposite end to the shoulder rib cage end. Inhale, over to one side, exhaling. If you don't use your breathing muscles, 
in this exercise, it, it ends up a bit more of a kind of generalist positioning. If you can find your breath out to roll the pelvis back through neutral, you actually get what you need from it. So the next time you find your legs back um, and pelvis back level, stay, big breath in. Exhaling now, hands behind the head and curl up. Bring your right leg up to tabletop and stretch your left leg off the floor but out long and reaching. Inhale, exhale, over you go, inhale and centre. We're doing one side for six. Both legs feel dramatically involved in energy as your obliques increase their connection to your pelvis. Three more, over to one side, not quite down, two more. The centre is really what you're looking for rather than rolling your head down. One shoulder blade most certainly moving away. All right, pull both knees into your chest, put the head down, big breath in. You're now in tabletop, exhale, curl. Curl up and down four times to feel everything symmetrical before we do the other side of your oblique. Breath out, curl, inhaling and down. Your shoulder blades are rolling off. Your thighs are very, very level. Last time, and send your other leg away. So curled up, everything's um, arranged. You come over to the thigh, and you come back down. Inhale, exhale over. It's not back down, that's strict center. Inhale. Now, if this is too intense, you can have one hand reaching. So if you cross the body with the right armpit to the left thigh bone, and keep your left arm reaching. If it's too intense, having both hands, um, fingertips to back of the skull. What you mustn't stop doing, you mustn't stop breathing the breath out to get the rotate and the breath into centre. You've got one more. I told you this would be intense. Pull both knees back in and now put your hands by your sides equally. Going back to hip rolls, this time with the legs in tabletop, imagine you only have one leg and breathe in. Breathe out to core connect. And on the next inhale, when you feel your trunk stabilizers, flow over to one side without the shoulders lifting. Breathe out, feel the abdominal wall, pull the pelvis back to center. Inhale, the legs have become one. You go over to one side, breath out, and you'll find yourself back over to center. Breath in. It's as though you're doing a semicircle, and the moment you feel the shoulder blades unloading is the moment you've rotated up the body for it to be a benefit structurally. Okay? We're looking at structural uh, mobilized, stabilized basically. Last two. Inhaling and exhaling. From that position there, then. Exhale, hands behind the head and curl up. Send your left leg and keep it straight and we're going over to the other side and back down. You're now keeping one leg straight, one leg bent. You've got four more. Exhale, don't let the hips roll. Inhale, stay in center. Breathe out, breathe in. I said it'd be everything oblique. Last time. Pull both knees in. If you can hold your form, do so. Stretch your other leg out and over to the other side. Every breath out, squeeze more air out. Inhaling. Inhale and back. Strong legs. Remember, you really can use one arm to the side if you want, although soon we're going to be bicycling the legs. Last two. Tell me your obliques aren't active now. Last one. And pull both legs in and send both legs to the ceiling. Um, have your arms slightly wider now as we take our legs into hip roll. Breathe in. They go over one side. Shoulders completely connected. Exhale. In your mind, you're taking a semicircle. The legs don't part company with each other as you inhale to flow over. Exhale, it's as though you're rolling bit by bit by bit through the back of the sacrum, 
to a moment of equal load both sides of the back of the pelvis and then unloading one side of the pelvis as you go one way and the reason you must connect the breath out is that the body will twist it's not you it's not that you're choosing it to but the breath out pelvic floor oblique fibers um, help the pelvis find the right muscles the right connections to bring this rotation sequence um, to be accurate okay it's your last time inhaling remember the discipline breathe out and feel the obliques work from this position here then you're going to bend your right leg keep your left leg straight put your hands behind your head and curl we're going to go from one side through center to the other side through center to the other side bend together stretch one leg out inhale together stretch one leg out inhale together stretch one leg out and keep it going remember if your hips are rolling then you're twisting from all the wrong areas. If your hips are rolling, you're failing to get your pelvic stability, which is pelvic floor, deep internal obliques. Whilst asking the body to create a rhythm and a routine of shoulders and ribs. Three more. Two more. Big breath. One more. And pull your knees into your chest. With your legs up into your chest, hold on to the back of your thighs and find yourself into seated. Once in seated, have your hands here. Um, so it's kind of this position here. You're going to have your hands like so. Breathe deeply in and out. On the next breath out then, reach forwards over your knees, bending the ribcage part of the spine, breathe in and out, and on the next breath in, come back to this kind of um, elegant position in terms of length through the neck and shoulders. Exhale and inhale and sit tall. Breathe out, press down through your feet, pull the navel to the spine, bending only the ribcage over the knee joint, the thigh bone area. I'm not collapsing, I'm resting onto my thighs. I'm deliberately making sure the side ribs, front ribs bend and stay, breathe in. Now exhale and side bend. Having equal load in your seated bone area as you find your bend with your breath out. Your hip flexors, yes, they're active. So are your obliques. Once more each side for a bend, and let that go. We're gonna go back to here then. Exhale, nod the chin and lean backwards off your sit bones and pull this to position here. I didn't mean to take my feet up and then come back up again, breathe. Exhale, rotate, breathe in. The shoulder slides. If you imagined a surface, um, circumference around the chest area. It's as though you're just sliding the scapula, the shoulder blade, the shoulder, the neck, the head, through that rotational moment. The pelvis stays true. Inhaling back up. Yes, your flexors are working, but so are your obliques. All right, people, you've just got one more each side. If you're not working deep, strong breaths out and in, you'll get all of this into the wrong places. The next position from here is take your legs and have them slightly wider. So I've got perfect symmetry for you. One arm up in the air, one arm across your waist, big breath in. Exhale, find the side bend without the load lifting out of the opposite hip. Breathe in. Exhale and bend over your forearm in the direction of your feet. So I've now crossed my body with my right arm over my left leg. Breathe deeply in, don't collapse of the waist. Come back again and switch. Big breath in. Exhaling, rotation over the forearm and across to my little toe. So I'm reaching across the body, breathe in, breathe out and come back again. Now the left arm behind you, right arm in front of you, big breath in. Exhale to pull the navel to the spine, the chin to the chest, opposing push. 
your back hand arm reaching one way, your front reaching the other, your legs pushing down against the floor, back down to your T, up to your T even, other way around, big breath, exhale, reach, 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 breathe, and returning back. Ready for a little bit more going on with the um, seated lean back, so approach this position again, remember this is obliques. You can actually do this with the legs straight, so make your choice, whichever rules you're using, um, the rules are, you can't let your thigh bones slide and articulate, it has to be stable. If we therefore pelvic tilt, turn and reach the hand back, we've done this before, return and come back up, same side each time, pelvic tilt and reach, that's the exhale, inhale and back, same side again, breath out, pelvic tilt and reach, your sensation would be that between your hip bones, um, on the side you're opening out and reaching for, there should be an increased activation. So deep inside the iliac crest is where this is all taking place. Exhaling, inhaling, last two, equal load through both feet, and last one, equal uh, weight of demand from the hip flexors, ready for the other side, inhale. The aim to create rhythm will only happen through breath. By one arm staying like so, it's helping you know where your shoulder is, rather than throwing your whole body. If it's too intense, then just do this with a little less rolling back. Or maybe keep everything centre. You'll still work your obliques, even if you keep going back and forth like this. This will still give you obliques, okay? Um, let's say one more. And now you're going to open to the other side and open both arms and return back and open, return back, breath out, roll and open, breath in, return and breathe out, roll and open, breathe in. Both of your obliques, this is from the hip bone, pelvic floor, to navel end should be really activated now. There's a lot of involvement as the body goes, oh my goodness, are you ready for your other side? Roll and open. Keep your eyes on the arm that's reaching away from you. Although if you feel you twist too much, keep your eye on the wrong arm that doesn't. If your hips are moving, as in twisting, then by all means look at the arm that doesn't move away. If you're finding the core connection and the right part of the body is doing the rotation, then by all means look to the furthest away arm. Last two. And last one. And with your legs straight, forward reach. And find that moment of, of kind of pausing the body. Your next shape is going to come straight into um, all fours for a moment. The all fours position right now is to really bring centering back to the body. We'll do the all fours and up into down dog or whatever you want to see it as, pyramid. Tuck your toes under your feet, rock backwards and forwards a few moments, breathing in and out, finding your core connection in this all fours position. That's the best way to see this moment. You're pressing pause. Allow the obliques and the flexors, the hip flexors and the previous activity were quite demanded of, um, allowing them to start to rebalance as it were. Okay, and then stay absolutely in your centre. Remember the rules about doing anything with upper body load is keep your chest, thumbs between your heart as it were. Toes are tucked under, have your legs tied together and exhale to let the head go down and find your ribs. Inhale, send your um, bottom up in the air and then press your heels down and pull them back up again. Down you go and up you go. Keep the ribs to the spine, keep the rib cage, chin to chest, rib cage area of connection. Two more. And last one. Keep the tiptoes, watch for your legs bending and hold that to a hover. If you can now pull back and forth, 
It's small, it's deliberate, your back is hovering um, and as though horizontal. Um, the moving by pushing through your heels of your hands and your feet, shrinking the navel to the spine and not tucking my bottom under and keeping my spine shape lengthened as if uh, mirroring the ceiling, sliding horizontally. Two more moments. One more. And then allow the knees down. Counter stretch, but do reach your arms right away. In this moment, breathe and think of the side of you as you breathe length into your obliques. Again, you haven't touched your bottom under. Some of you may have pelvic tilted because you're lordotic, but otherwise you're not tucked under. You're breathing length into the sides of your ribcage part of the spine. Think cylinders. You need to expand the cylinder and contract. It needs to both um, get bigger and wider to create space and on the exhale, feel as though it stabilizes that sense of space. With your next breath out then, pelvic tilt, tuck your bottom under and return your spine shape to a kneeling up position. Um, there's nothing more significant in oblique work than these, doing this side of the body. Here we go into your sides, and there's going to be quite a few of these. It'll start off with a load through the shoulder, then it's going to go to a bit lighter, then it's going to go back to the shoulder. Remember how we do this? If you look at where your kneeling is, make sure both thigh bones are level with an edge on your mat. Then take your hand, we did this last week, to the edge, and take your heel to the other edge. Our first sequence is the trying of lifting through the knee, ling leg, in other words, you lift the weight up. If the heel is on the ground, on this straight leg, and the heel of the hand is taking your load through here, put your hand around your waist or put your hand on here. Big breath in. Breathe out, shrink the tongue, and then take your leg away, and then breathe in to pull it back again. Breathe. You push the ground away, and you pull it back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Everything from hip bone to hip bone works hard. You can keep your head looking down if that helps you find keeping your load into your armpit and your waist and not into the cap of the shoulder. You've got two more. I only move my underneath leg as it were when this has a known connection and then it feels strong and I'm pushing against the ground with all, everything that's right. It's your last one. Pull that down. Pull both knees together. Make sure they're level even if you counter stretch and then allow the posture to lean backwards. Obviously getting the load out of the wrist and any unwanted involvement of your lower back, sacral to lumbar area. You're breathing deeply in and out. Pelvic tilt to allow the realignment ready for the other side. I can't stress enough how much you have to be in alignment for this. I looked down at both thighs, they're level. I deliberately placed my hand, you couldn't have my all four space apart. And then I placed my other heel. The secret in this position is not to shift like that, but to keep a vertical thigh bone on the kneeling leg. Then the next thing is that your heels, heel, knee, heel of hand, are very very where they should be no side is the same so get ready with the breathing and anticipate letting the underneath leg leave the ground next time you feel a good connection take the underneath leg into what effectively is a side plank shape and then pull it back again very deliberately breathing your cue is the felt breath out connecting your core and not the shoulder area feeling as though it's been demanded of because the armpit is the armpit where you're going to get your load. Inhaling and back, breathe, shrink, push the ground away and remember you can turn the head, breathe, the hand and the heel and the waist, push the ground away. Two more. And last one. And let that go. Okay, once again, take your bottom and knees backwards. Breathing deeply in and out. 
and then tuck keyboard and under, we're going back to the first side. So here, with your leg in place, you're back to the original position. Open through the chest, pelvis is level, and then the leg will lift and lower. Your obliques now work, not in an aggressive way, but in a stability way. So both, you visualize both sides of your waist equally long. You can sit with my fingers, I'm keeping the structural length of the waist as the leg lifts and lowers. Let's see if we can do some leg circles. So draw that thigh bone circling. Your obliques now are stabilizing to allow further down the body to mobilize as you're going circle and circling. Um, the pelvis stays absolutely true and nothing's happening to your lower back. Are you ready to go the way you've just been? So now we do the opposite. And shrink between the hip bones. So beautifully lengthened and light as you do the circles. I forgot which way I was going just then. Last two. Last one. And ready for your other side. Both knees are level. The winner is the person that finds the setup. You're onto your fingertips. You haven't collapsed at this hip bone. Opening, it's your side positioning. And we have our lift and lower. Underneath side waist works. This side works. Both of your lengths of side are equal as the leg lifts and lowers. Be conscious of whether or not you've twisted or rotated at the hip. And if the load is going straight into your side bottom, then the chances are um, you're doing a good job. Never be afraid of having a quick look down and keep the breathing regular and sense making. Are you ready for those circles? So you'll circle and circle. My um, load through my arm is so light because the functional connection of the obliques, the pelvic floor, the navel spine, and now the abductors on both legs, actually the knee and the leg as well as this leg, are really happening. Reverse that journey. Your aim really is to stay largely still on the kneeling leg. It's not that you brace, it's just that neither are you wanting the pelvis to have any unnecessary movement um, laterally or front back. The smooth articulation of these circles will wake up everything. And as we've done this journey over 61 videos, I'm hoping these positions are starting to become a bit more familiar and more acceptable to your form. All right, make this your last one. And the knees come together. You're now ready for your side lying. So quickly into your sides. No um, oblique work would be complete. Remember your arms can either go here or here, whichever way. We're straight into our double leg lift. I've promised myself that for us all as a, a kind of group, we'll really understand the double leg lift with a bit of a hip hitch. Yes, you're lying in neutral initially. The underneath side feels away from the floor in this moment here, and then it closes in this moment there. Exhaling. To have your hand in front of your pelvis is completely fine. Now breathe out as you lift. Inhale, point the toes and reach the legs down. Breath out, lift. You can see my hip moving to and fro towards my ribs. I'm not kicking, I'm lifting, and it's the obliques that lift my legs, not my legs making my obliques work. My obliques connect my legs. Next time up, I'm going to stay. Now I'm going to expand and close up there. Keep the waist on the floor side that you're lying connected to the ground as you ask the legs to stay hitched and abducted, lifted. And the inner thigh working hard, now do it with flex feet. Inhale, it's as though you're stretching your band. Breath out, squeeze. Inhaling, stretch that band with your thigh bones. Breathe out, squeeze. Inhaling. You two more. And you've one more. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. Pull your knees in and push yourself up. Ready for your other side.
the beauty of this like, limb sequence is it starts to become a bit like a stretch really once you get your body strong enough to find it each time there's a sense of connection and length so breathing deeply in and out up and down the simplest way to get a stronger connection is to have the ankles flexed and to do this move accurately make the abdominal wall on the breath out your primary focus being diligent to only allow the movement with the connected breath remember the waist is off the floor in this moment it's on the floor with the lift it's lowering it comes off two more before we stay stay and we open imagine you're stretching your band and close make more of the underneath leg coming up than the top leg coming down my abductors my inner thighs my outer thighs my deep waist three more and two more your last one pull your knees into your chest and to finish off with to assess and get used to everything as we want to make it happen for obliques we're going to do your side plank send one leg send the second leg feet apart keep your chest heart over fingers breathe out start to turn onto the sides of the foot that's the back foot take your arm breathe deeply in and then come back again ready go to your other side the strength returns to the body because of all that we've been doing it's really there for you to now access as you go from one side remember the key is to not let the shoulder drift away from the hand but keep your chest right over this end of the mat. Okay, once more each side. Pivoting around. And let that go. Pull your knees in. To end this session with a stretch, you're going to stretch through the front of the thigh. Make your thigh bones parallel. Have your arms here. Lean backwards so you can touch your heels and spring forwards. Core connect, backwards lean and let's take this into a reach. As you go back and touch with your left hand to your left ankle, take that hand, open your chest, come back, other side, backwards lean, hand heel, extend and return back. Now smooth with it. It's a reach synchronized rhythm once more each side and there you have it so that's all we have time for today um, a deep oblique connection and I said at the beginning if you couldn't feel that in your obliques then talk to me because I can certainly add more hopefully in the next um, 24 48 hours you'll know that all of this was really enlivened and you'll feel a little bit more connection um, consciously with how to make your obliques act on your behalf. It's a goodbye from me as I prepare, prepare she says, to get ready for um, the Zoom sessions. And if you have a quick look at the studio, you can see how we're preparing um, for everyone coming back. There's a slightly different configuration for all the beds, but whichever way this will be, our safe space as we get ourselves back to the abnormal norm. All right, take care, everybody. Your obliques have been found, I hope, for the rest of the day. If you want a harder workout now, I'd combine that with a bar workout if you want to get your legs going. So it's a goodbye from me, and I will see you very soon. Thank you, everybody. Um, keep the journey going. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.